I'm Luke Story. For the past 22 years, I've been relentlessly committed to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of spirituality, health, psychology, and personal development. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. Man, we are in a, I was going to say a winter wonderland, but it's now spring. We are in a spring wonderland here. This place is freaking amazing, dude. Are you talking about this place? Yes. Q360, yeah. Malibu, California. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. It's so cool. It's, uh, uh, our mutual friend Doyle has been telling me about you guys for, I don't know, three years or something. What took you so long to get well, here? Well, I moved. That's Oh, that's the thing. Okay, well, yeah. you're, you're you're off the hook. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's good. It's a long drive from Austin, Texas. Yeah, it's it's a minute. But he was he was telling me about it shortly before the lockdown, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get out there. He's like, dude, we gotta go, we gotta go. And then the lockdown happened, and I just holed up in Laurel Canyon and didn't leave until I got a U-Haul and left t- for good. So it was really fun to be back here. You got out in time, man. I'm not sure. It was good timing. All the taxes and stuff with California. I'd, You know, I don't know. It's pretty nice. I like that part. But to be honest, um, I've been staying in Venice on the on the west side and spending some time up here in Malibu. I'm like, ah, I didn't think I missed California because it just got kind (laughs) of weird, you know, during that period. And I was like, I'm out. But I gotta admit, I've been like, shit, it's pretty nice here. It's it's nice. I mean, (laughs) you know. Beautiful view. Yeah, we're you, looking at the ocean right now. This is my second podcast this week in the Malibu overlooking the ocean. Okay, so, so it's like this, this is what you know brought me down here is this. You look at the water, I'm Pisces, mountains, you know, that's all we need. Yeah. However, some of the individuals that uh, are here, they could maybe go or stay. I'm not sure. I'm not saying anything that's maybe PC or not. I'm not sure how to... The elected officials, I would say, could be on the first boat out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can get them on the... Actually, uh, I was talking to... Olympic Doyle. or was it the Titanic? I'm not sure. The Titanic. Anyway, whatever. Uh, that would be my vote. It's funny. I was texting <laughs> with Doyle and I was having a, just a beautiful California moment and I went, man, God, there are some things here I really miss. It's just, there are parts that are so beautiful. And he, and he texted me the perfect answer and he said, dude, California is amazing. The only problem is it's in California. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> But I mean, I lived here for 32 years in LA and I mean, I loved it. I had many lives and careers and it was very, it was very good to me. So I, I honor it. But anyway, uh, you come from Toronto. Yes. And you were telling me a little earlier that you got into this stuff like what, 2003? We're talking about frequency uh, technologies well, and things like that. It goes back further than that. Okay. I got into this. Here, I'll, I'll give you a little rundown. Okay. Um, it's been an odyssey, really. I couldn't have planned it don't know if I want to change it or not. It's, it's been a path, you know? So yeah. um, I was um, living next to a nuclear facility, Pickering, Ontario, Canada. I was 12 years old. And all of a sudden, you know, did you hear so-and-so down the street, they have cancer? And I'm like, no, I didn't, you know? And then family members and stuff. And we we're close proximity to a very large nuclear facility, one of the largest ones in North America, Candy Reactor. Uh, it was 5A Stone Ridge Line, and all these people started getting cancer on my street, and I couldn't understand. Okay, why are we using radiation? I'm 12 years old, and why are we using radiation to fix cancer when it's causing cancer? And I'm like, would we move to Chernobyl? Would we do this? And they're like, shut up, kid, go away, beat it. You don't know what you're talking about. So anyway, that that question led me to this moment in time of now. It's been an odyssey, no joke. So the truth of how things actually really work as opposed to what we're taught, it's inverted. It's completely inverted. As above, so is below, no joke. Who were some of the first uh, pioneers and inventors that you started to discover? You know, the Royal Rife or Tesla? Like Actually, Linus Pauling. Oh, Linus Seriously. Pauling. Seriously. Oh, okay. You know, antioxidant, vitamin C, that... You know, kind of started me down. molecular medicine. Yeah. Stuff, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, then you know, look at David Hudson with uh, Ormus, uh, orbitally rearranged monatomic elements, and ah, oh, you just reminded me, dude. It, I was going to bring you like this incredible. I interviewed a guy named David Reed the other day, and he's got a product. Why called does it sound familiar? It's David an Australian Reed. guy. He's got a product called Mana, and I get overloaded with products. I'm not okay. easily impressed at this point. God bless all the companies, but you know, it's like everything's out. I figured. He scoured the earth and the Himalayas and the Dead Sea and Israel okay. all over to source the most potent shilajit 
and also sea plasma from the Dead Sea, which he then has this process to kind of amplify or extract the Ormus. And so it's this stuff called mana. It comes in a little packet. It's one gram of shilajit and then highly concentrated Ormus sea minerals. And it is so fucking awesome because I know Did you're you into try minerals. It? Yeah, I have it. I was going to bring you one. and I uh, like, Man, I want to try yeah. it because I'm going to test it and yeah. see... I mean, I'm open to anything that works. Yeah. Best practices. That's, yeah. that's my kind Do you of muscle test stuff? I saw you guys doing some pendulum stuff here. Yes. It's kind of like I have equipment here that takes the human uh, element out of it, if you will. It measures in real time. It can test up into the 96, 97% accuracy. It just sends a, a ping. Does this work for the individual taking, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to sell people anything, so... Muscle testing sometimes is like, yeah, we go to our mineral shop and buy all of our yeah, shit. Yeah. Uh, like with I the little EMF pendants yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah, at yeah. the health shows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're I'm like, you were pressing harder the second time. Yeah, I no, like it. the guy's hanging on your arm, yeah. pulling it down. No, I'm, I'm not into that. But yes, we do. Um, I'm very neutral. I just want people to get the best stuff, whatever they need. We're the guides down the river. So that's, that's kind of the philosophy here. Yeah. My center is designed for all self-healing. I don't heal anybody that comes in here. However, I brought in everything from the great people, you know, women and men that built way better technology over 100 years ago. They're ostracized, whatever. This is a tribute to them. No joke. From Tesla to Ruth Drown to, you know, uh, many, many uh, you know, Huxley, all these people that had better technologies. Buddy of mine, Sam, you know, all the, all the stuff that's here. They just went... Um, they tried to get it into a pure thing, and it ended up it didn't work so well because yeah. it's about maybe money, whatever whatever the agenda was. So yeah, we do we do a lot of different testing to see what is working with the terrain. Now, just because it says it's doing something, well, what is the manufacturer? How's it processed? Titanium dioxide. Where are the ingredients? Do they work with that particular individual? Is it going to have a a voltage drain, or is it going to have a voltage gain. Now, a healthy person, a resting cell, you go look at Jerry Tennant. I'm so glad these guys are saying it now because I've been talking about this stuff for years. And it's just like, okay, they can say it. They have the accolades, and that's super cool. So a resting uh, cell, if you want to call it homeostasis, I'm pretty sure that's trademark. We'll just say balance. Runs between minus 22 to minus 25 millivolts. So that is, if you look at it, um, you have Duracell batteries, carbon and zinc, electron potential. But they have to touch in order to conduct, right? So, Like if you put the battery, two AA batteries in the wrong it way, it, nothing happens. There's no, it, it flips the polarity. It, yeah. It's not going to send a charge. So when a battery starts to become depleted, it's like a drill. You don't put it on charge or your iPad or whatever it is. What happens? The battery goes to its last moment and it drains. It becomes a potential of a hot battery. And that is where dis-ease of cell occurs. So anything 30 plus millivolts, as opposed to minus 25 millivolts, it flips the polarity. And that's where dis-ease of cell is. It's a cell, cell voltage, whatever. And that's where we have conditions, syndromes, other diseases I'm not going to get into. But that's where things start to fail. And a body will take energy from somewhere else. For instance, uh, super renal. It's a parallel pack with what? Thyroid. So when we have issues with our suprarenal, we have issues with thyroid. Thyroid is a thermostat for the body. It allows the heat fluctuation. If um, it's not working right, there's cell voltage discrepancy. The TSH, um, you know, thyroid stimulating hormone, will start to go the opposite direction. And then T4, T3 conversion doesn't work. And that runs cell voltage. So then you go to T3, T2, T1. That is the mitochondria voltage. So now we're not getting our ATP. We're not getting our energy to the actual energy system. And it starts to fail. And we have this ease of cell. And by the way, if you eat Beautiful. food, everything you break down by the gastric you know, uh, system, it converts ATP back into light, red light, infrared light. We are light, we breathe light, which is oxygen. We see with light. So I don't know. 
So good. It's all spectrum of light. So good. Uh, you reminded me of the deuterium piece. Oh, and yeah. I, dude, I'm going to send you, if you're interested, I did uh, years ago, this is maybe five, probably five years ago, I did a couple deep dive uh, shows on deuterium, deuterium depleted water and all that with a couple scientists. It's Who was it? Uh, I uh, Dr. Laszlo. Okay. Uh, Boros and uh, Dr. Q. Where are they out of? They sound familiar. Uh, they're, for, they're from here. Okay. I mean, not from here, but they're UCLA based here. Or yeah, UCLA is, is okay. Laszlo, Bor uh, Laszlo Boros. Okay. <laughs> Always get his first and last name confused. And then Dr. Q is an, a PhD immunologist. And they okay. were partners at the time, like working on some deuterium stuff. And then they went their own ways. But anyway, I've done a few of them on that. And it's something I'm really fascinated by. And you right. talked about the mitochondria. And um, the reason I raised that is because I was asking someone here at the clinic around the foot baths. I said, have you done it with distilled water? Yes. Then you can explain that whole oh, thing. Okay, okay, but she yeah. says, she goes, oh, we sometimes do it with deuterium depleted water. And I was like, what? I never heard of that. What, what's that? What's up with that? So let's um, do the foot bath thing and like your take on deuterium. <sighs> okay. Um, so foot bath, ionic foot bath, it was approved as hydrotherapy, uh, 1974. I worked with a gentleman that was doing all the research, um, Dr. Cornwallis. He's still around. I thought he was gone. They tried to, you know, whatever they do. So he would do a full submersion with putting people in a bathtub, and he would do a five-day turnaround and change voltage, and people didn't have that uh, crisis, if you will. Yeah. However, so... People go and they go, oh, there's a color chart with, you know, green to whatever, you know, gallbladder and this and this and this. That's not how it really works. We're looking at particles. You're creating, it's like, um, how do I put it? You know, when you energize something, let's say you want to paint a surface and you put a charge on it and now you have a sprayer and it's now drawing everything towards that negative charge. So that's how we, you know, to different uh, paint jobs, you, you know, you energize it. So it's, it's drawn. So what we're doing is we're speeding up the body's ability to sweat, perspiration. You're opening up pores, you're creating a draw, like a pulses, into water. Well, we're 72.8% water. Makes sense, right? So it's opening up the pores and it's allowing that flow to sweat it out. That's what foot baths do. Cool. And that's the real science behind it. It's just like, get the toxins out. I'm, I'm glad to know it's legit, because as I was telling you earlier, I had one for a few years, and I was like, I don't know if it's doing anything. And then, and then I thought it was a scam, because I put distilled water in it, and then the water didn't turn color. So I was like, oh, it's fake. Yeah. Because you know, I thought it was like toxins coming out, and then you explained, because there's no uh, electrolytes in the water. There's, it's, it's, there's distilled nothing water's to oxidize. Dead. Right. There's distilled water, it collapses the uh, structure I'll give a whole class on that later. There's no conductivity. You can send distilled water pretty much in a lightning storm. You're not going to conduct. You're safe in electricity. You're not going to be, um, you know, yeah. energized. So same with uh, reverse osmosis. It steals all the minerals out of the uh, structure of water. So it collapses it. And when you drink that distilled water or reverse osmosis, what does water want to do? It wants to fill its cup first. So it steals your electrolytes. So it dehydrates more. One of the biggest signs of people that drink distilled water, reverse osmosis, what? They start to lose copper, gray hair, collagen, theranine, amino acid creates it. So now all the collagen starts to go. They look really depleted. Now I'm a very good friend of mine, uh, Robert Slovak, who's a water oh, scientist. Oh, Robert? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, his He's brother, been on the show a bunch of times. His yeah. brother, what happened? Too much of what? Was he drinking just oh, RO water? Yeah. He wasn't remineralizing he it? He wasn't. Oh, man. At the time, and then Robert found the Quinton. Yeah. And, like, you need to have minerals. Yeah. So Mahatma Gandhi, 1939, he marched for the what? Salt tax. It wasn't about that. It was about having minerals. Minerals create amino acids. Amino acids creates a peptide, protein, cell, organ, self. That is a very fundamental grain of sand that builds a brick that builds a building. That's the structural part. And then you have the photonic energy where 
light shines, photosynthesis, plants. We ingest plants to get what? Vitamins, which are also enzymes. It's all photon. Wow. So where does the deuterium depleted water come in in the foot bath? I used to make this in my garage, and I would hit it with a microwave. Now, the frequency of water is 2.45 gigahertz. Sounds like a 5G something. Anyway, I'm not going to get into <laughs> it. All right. So that's how you start to ionize. You create friction radiation heat. So Michael Faraday cage, whatever, microwave. And you match the resonant frequency of H2O. And it creates it to start to move, oscillate, create friction radiation heat. So you put food in, it has moisture. It matches moisture. That's what heats up food. You could put a piece of paper in there. There's no moisture. What happens? Nothing. Because it's not matched to that resonance. And that's how everything works. You have to have a resonant frequency. So that's how the microwave was working. So if you want to start to break down deuterium depleted water, you hit it with a microwave and you release the deuterium uh, isotope, which is a heavier isotope of the hydrogen in water. So I used to make this uh, in the garage, wow. and then I would freeze it, and the heavier water would freeze quicker, and I'd scoop it out. However, I was telling Robert and some scientists, I'm like, why don't you just take a, like, a scope, fall it all the way down, keep remarking the frequency, and take it down to zero. You don't have to put it through a filter. So deuterium depleted water, they use it in um, a lot of different science with mitochondria to reset neutrality in the body so there's no voltage discrepancy and that mitochondria goes all the way up from you know goes up to the surface there's so many different properties so of water. is that is that discrepancy in voltage with water that's say 155 parts per million with a, a lot of deuterium like your right. average tap water or low altitude is that what gums up the nanomotors in the mitochondria that, that, Partly. that hinders the ATP production? Partly. That's oh, only part of there's it. There's more to it? There's so much more to this, man. Wow. We're opening up a, like, a wormhole. No joke. I love it. So, I mean... The, I could the, call this show the Wormhole Podcast. I yeah. Mean, that's how we roll. Why not? Why not? Just open the door. We're in Australia. Why so, not? So how does, this <laughs> how does this voltage situation with the deuterium depleted water then work in the foot bath? So... Uh, I was doing a test. I had a, a growth on my calf, and I'm just like, well, I'm going to use, um, instead of uh, a processed water, I'm going to use a deuterium depleted water, which is very, very low, and it's going to give me the conductivity, but it's not going to have any memory to it. So I used it in a cleared situation. From really drinking cleared. it? No, I just ran frequencies through it. Whoa. So I do a lot of these things. I test so many things, man. It's like crazy. Wow. I wish I lived closer. I would be in here all the time. It's, it's like a, a little, uh, I don't know. It's, I don't like know what a, this it's is. a laboratory. It kind of is. You know, in a sense, because you have all the diagnostic pieces too. Which I can't even call it diagnostic. That's a trademark oh, okay. medical term. So these are biofeedback assessment. Uh, assessment. There you go. Body mapping. There you go. Here, what's going on with your cell voltage today? Right. And we can look at in real time and correct in real time. Now, that is very important. So a lot of people go, they go through standard care, which is awesome. I mean, I love all the men and women that do that. Um, they're really trying to help people. Whether they know stuff or not, that's to be debated. However, um, when you look at how the body works, there was a guy that once said, oh my God, what is his name? Do no harm, let food be thy medicine. I don't yeah. know, Hippocrates. Anyway, I'm just joking. But everything that we're doing, we're doing more aggression. It's a war on this and that, whatever. And they're not using the system as a whole. They're looking at, well, you go to your nephrologist, cardiologist. I mean, these parts are all connected, aren't they? Right? They're all part of it. So it should be a practitioner that's just called a bodily system. Yeah. Hist. Right. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, so I wanted to develop something that used old science. I mean, th the stuff I'm using is like Ayurvedic, a 600 plus years to Chinese traditional to even Western, you know, allopathic, which means alternative medicine, 180 
to 183 years, it's best practices. It's a 360 approach for people to understand how to change their state from the emotion, which is 80%, all the way down to just, you know, what are they eating? Is it glyphosate in it? I'm not sure. Is there something that is not allowing the body to get the information it needs to? So going back to the term depleted water, I mean, yeah, everything gets gummed up. I've looked at all these different uh, processes, how we can utilize different ways to send signals. It's all about sending signals. And that's how I got into all this stuff. And I'll give you a little quick side note with this, and I'll get back and I'll wrap it up, and it'll be cool. 12 years old, people dying on my street with cancer, wanted to help them. Couldn't understand why we're using radiation, just didn't make sense when they're, you know, the radiation was causing cancer. And it was causing a cell voltage discrepancy. It's a proton charge. A resting potential of a healthy human cell works at minus 25 millivolts. It's a negative charge, hydroxyl. Interesting, right? When a cell divides, in order to have a perfect copy of cell division, it must be between minus 50 to minus 90 millivolts. And that's where you get a perfect Xerox copy. And the telomeres, Leonard Hayflick, 1962, said, you know, the little shoestring on the telomeres, which, by the way, on chromosome, it's a tuning fork. I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. It starts to shrinking down. Poor copy, poor copy, death of cell apoptosis. Or poor copy, poor copy, protector cell, continuous cell, cancer, quarantine cell. And that's how it really works. Wow. Proven by many great people over the last 100 plus years. Wild. We have a war on cancer. Now, turn off cancer. It's the last moment of defense. It's built into every single cell in our body. See, I thought the cancer thing was a um, chemotherapy deficiency. Yeah, well, it could be. <laughs> it could be. We might need more. I'm not sure. You know, I'm always, uh, I'm looking for whatever works for everyone. Yeah, you man. know. But when I'm looking at all the stats from when I started to now, they haven't changed and that many years it's yeah. three to five percent three to five percent i said look you know y you want to go on your your studies and stuff you made five percent would i pass you i don't it's so weird three to five percent and here's how it's presented within five years 97 percent of the people will make it well what they should say is Five years, 97% of the people don't make it. And you don't have to cut parts off to do this. Burn it, poison it, no. And that's how it, it's cell voltage. So anything at any moment of time can become cancer as a protector cell. It's life extension technologies. They have vats in uh, uh, Florida right now. They take a light chain antibody out of... I don't know if I, we censored this part or not. No, it's okay. They grow. I've interviewed some super far out people on the uh, show. Like no one is. Well, maybe I'm medium anything. far out. <laughs> yeah, you can go as far out as you want. So there's vats of multiple myeloma that they take, you know, um, and they take the light chain antibody out of it as a as a technology. Just like everything comes from something, right? Metal, iron, ore, to whatever. Everything comes from the planet or research, or, you know, from an extraction, tincture, plant medicine, whatever frequency. Okay, so I'm just, you know, kind of giving how it works. So they take a light chain antibody from multiple myeloma and they use that as a smart bomb chemo for 100,000 and the same tech, and you have to dig into this, pregnancy test kit for five bucks. Yeah. It's weird. Wow. So there's a lot of stuff. And I'm all for best practices. But it's a disease maintenance thing that I couldn't stand. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't do it. It's frustrating. It is and frustrating. And it's also, it's, it's like a lot of this, the cycle that we're stuck in at our stage of medical evolution or devolution. <laughs> uh, you maybe devolution. It's like, it's the war against principle. You know, it's yeah. like the war on drugs. Anytime you're against something, it's like you get caught in a negative feedback loop versus yeah. being, it's 
it's a movement for health and radiance and vitality and longevity, so right? So but it, it is. Anytime you add that, like, a war against the thing, against the cancer, against the You don't drugs. fight anything. Yeah. Be neutral. So that goes back to the Holy Trinity. It goes back to Nikola Tesla. Positive, negative, neutral. You want to understand the universe, think in energy, vibration, frequency. His numbers were 369 when they confiscated his stuff. Base 12, thoracic 12. That's I built that Tesla coil over there. It's interesting because at the top of the apex, you have the energy, uh, the male, if you will, masculine, animated. Uh, sun comes into view in the morning. It animates us with what? Red light, infrared light. It powers our hydrogen, which is the number one on even the fake periodic table that they teach in college. Uh, Walter D. Russell was a, it's a different thing. But hydrogen is divided into the whole, uh, if you want to look at uh, the periodic table, the atomic weight is divided by hydrogen on the whole table. So hydrogen is the base source. So in the morning when sun comes into view, it animates us with the color red. And it gets us motion, get up, move around. Now if it's cloudy in Seattle or Toronto where I'm from, uh, you might want to just light a fire and watch a movie if it's dark, right? Okay. So as the sun goes by, noon, hydrogen rotates on the color green. Did you go in the cloud? Yeah. What color did you see? Pink. When you came out? Green. Oh, I didn't notice. It resets your neutral oh, of the hydrogen, the oh. color spectrum, man. You go wow. back to homeostasis. That's trademark. Balance. You go back to <laughs> balance. Okay. Yeah. So as the sun goes by, high noon, neutral, hydrogen, it goes into a violet color. What happens? We have a 180 degree polarity shift on how we think in the morning versus evening. So if you get on a jet, you go from LA to New York, it flips your polarity and that's called jet lag. But you can flip it back really quickly, just simple stuff. So light is very, very, very important, right? Do you remember, um, oh my God, Sean Connery, James yep. Bond? Yeah. I mean, they paint that lady gold, Goldfinger. Remember that? Yeah. Oh my God. But she suffocated, why? Even though she could breathe through her nose or mouth, she suffocated. Because they block skin. Epithelial cells need light, which is oxygen. They need it. It has to breathe. Interesting, right? Wow. And he's like, tied to the table, and he's like, do you expect me to talk, Goldfinger? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Remember that? It was, like, <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, a brilliant yeah. moment. Yeah, However, sure. Quantum is Solus, it was the same thing, but the lady was painted in black gold. She suffocated. Huh. We need light. Prana. Respirit. Respiratory. I don't know, something about that. It's like you bring in oxygen. Oxygen is flow. And water is flow. Like Bruce Lee said, be like water and flow. I don't know. So all these things I wanted to bring together and I got into this because I wanted to know how can we do stuff that's better and it turns out there was a lot better technology in the 1900s. When you started this, this outfit here, uh, what was the first iteration of it? You're in like a huge beautiful space now overlooking the ocean. What was the first version of it that was available to the public? And wh what were the first couple technologies you started working with? Uh, this was uh, 2003. I had a center in Toronto, uh, Yorkville, 112 Scholard Street, close to where they do the Toronto Film Festival. My dad actually was the super on the building that they built the new location on Yorkville. And I had a, a room that I built specifically and had a multi wave oscillator like a dr george lakovsky yeah um like a vibe machine and i had it completely uh, faraday caged and i had people that come in like the room was faraday yeah the oh, whole room wow. i built this whole room so all those frequencies were just contained yeah and, and, and people would sit in there <laughs> and they would just get <laughs> charged up man wow oh my God. i had a sandwich sign and and the center was called stuff that works health technologies and beyond and i had the little you know, heart monitor is ridiculous. People would come in for all sorts of conditions. And I was sharing earlier um, the penny drop when I had this young, I mean, I've had so many people that came through and uh, physicians would send me their people because I was outside of what they could do. 
based on their license because they're in a box. And I was yeah. the guy that could take people to the another, you know, keep them, get their voltage back. So I had a guy, James Cassar, this is years ago. He was diagnosed with uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He went through the whole standard care program. And he said, here's your prognosis. You have two months to live. Oh, man. And he, you know, he came into me and said, look, man, I, I can't guarantee you anything. But if you want to come, whenever you can, it's your schedule. I ain't chasing you. Show up. We'll do the work. Five months, one week later, clear. Got married. He's got girls today. Damn. So I got so really good cool. at blood disease. Really good at blood disease. And wow. to all these other things. It's just about voltage. People don't even understand. It's like, okay, um, everything creates a magnetic field, right? That energy is transferred into our field of energy. So for instance, Ernest Hartman, 1953, German doctor. The importance of ley lines, geopathic burden. Yeah. Oh, People don't even look at that. Dude, I, look, can I, I just mean, ask you yeah, a question? Yeah, no, man, go for it. Because I, like, I love okay, this stuff, man. So, you know, you can have someone come in with dowsing rods and look for the ley lines in your house, right, to find the geopathic stress. Yeah. And then there's like biogeometry and different shit you yeah. can do to balance it. I've had this theory that the reason you talked about the, the jet lag of going, you know, from, from LA to New York, I'm way more affected by just driving in a car, driving an airplane, anytime I'm traveling across land at an unnatural speed, I get totally trashed. Okay. And I've always suspected that for some reason I'm susceptible to crossing ley lines. Yeah, man. Do you think there's anything to that? You, what you Cuz those ley lines go up 30,000 feet. Yeah. Right? More. Yeah, I mean they probably go into the stratosphere, you know, they, so, they do. And you're not like no living organism on earth sands that technology of flight or motorized travel in, in a vehicle, we're not meant to go through that. Like we're only meant to cross as many as, as fast as we can Snail run. trail. You know? Yeah. Do you think there's any, anything to Absolutely. that? Absolutely. But can we um, filter it? Yeah, that, that, that's true too. It's like water. We filter it today, right? right? So anyway, where were you going with the, the uh, ley lines? So, so ley lines was really important with the endocrine system. So one of the number one things I found doing this for a long time, ladies would come in and they would have an issue with thyroid. Well, it turns out it was a bad ley line in their home. Oh, dude. And it would turn off their, th so they'd have hot night, cold sweats, all this stuff. That's so going they're on. on a geopathic stress Right zone. there. Yeah. Um, I uh, had that. I yeah. had that in a house. So. And I had my uh, EMF master buddy named Brian Hoyer come and he came and, you know, scanned the whole house and all that. So I'm like an EMF nut. Like we could yeah. riff on that too. But he found, <laughs> he found the ley line crossed the middle of the bed. <laughs> it's just like, dude. dude seriously. Yeah. And so <laughs> all he did was installed this figure eight about, about yay big made of copper. Okay. Put it on a certain wall and then came in with the dowsing rods again and it was cleared. Yeah. Copper has a unique ability when I built it. I'm like, what? Magnetic motor. I should probably not say that Unity Plus thing. Anyway, <laughs> that doesn't matter. It, 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 can, it can bounce uh, fields, magnetism. Copper is one of the most unique things to do it. Yeah. So you can use copper pipe. It's like acupuncture for the planet. You can go with the rods, dows, walk the line, uh, stick an 18-inch pipe, if you're in an apartment, you can tape it to the wall, it does the same thing, and you can do that. You can use selenite. There's different things you can do. Figure eight, yeah, it just, it's like flexing the energy back so and forth. So I mean, cool. there's different ways to do it. Have you geeked out on uh, electroculture at all? Yeah, quite a where, bit. Where you, I just made a bunch of them. The little, I just get these copper, or these wood dowels and wrap copper wire, and I did it to all Man, my- I'll go show you my, oh my God. I did it yeah. to all my house plants <laughs> before I came out here. Yeah. And I'm curious to see like how they're doing when I get back. How long ago did you do this? Uh, it's been probably two weeks. Did you use any crystal or just wood? No, just so you're making like a um, organite ma material. Yeah, ba basically just um, an, a conductor a, a, with an, a an, an, an antenna insulator. for the for the ethers essentially. You know, I mean, I know very little about Let me it. I show you so much stuff because oh most God. people are doing it in gardening, and I'm seeing these cats on social media like, "Hey, this is the tomato that I didn't put the thing in, and this is the tomato I did," and it's like, "What the hell?" 
I mean, yeah. it, it, they are picking up energy. And so the, the theory there is all this pesticides and fertilizers and all this shit, like back in the day, we, we had this technology and it was suppressed or lost or whatever. Absolutely. But, the, you know, there's this energy, like Tesla stuff, right? That the energies and the ethers it's everywhere. can be captured and infused into your food. You can do it through thought, which is faster than light, as scalar. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Speed of thought is instant now. It's like folds everything. Um, why do you want to bless your food? Because you're, I mean, the consciousness of plants and animals, they have consciousness. They're both alive. I went vegan. I did everything you could think of. And when I was 121 days plus whatever, I was not getting what I needed, B12 vitamins through, you know, Animal source. Or retinol. Yeah. And I, I, I'm and like, copper. oh my God. Yeah. One steak later. I, like, I'm, seriously, thyroid shut down, hair falling out. I've I'm been like, there, oh bro. my God. Couldn't lift a, anything. <laughs> I've been and, there. And God bless everybody. However you want to eat. That's totally. not what I'm saying. Everyone's got a different thing. Yeah. However, you know, always thank it. Change the state of it. And you can do that also with all the engineered stuff. You can transmute it. It's energy. There's no such thing as solid. Even platonic solids aren't solid. They flex, they move. If I take an atomic force microscope and put anything under its view, an atom is what? Mainly empty white space. Okay. But it's oscillating at a certain vibration that appears to be a movie or solid. Interesting, right? Yeah, very. So that's how it all works. And you can change it by appreciation. And that's the power of prayer. You can change stuff really quick. You have to go to the level of knowing. Belief is not knowing. And I found this many years ago when that kid, um, and I didn't show this part on this uh, podcast, but I had that kid come in that we were talking about earlier. His father brought him in. He carried him on his shoulder, whatever, to my center in, in Canada, uh, stuff that works. And... At a lynch meeting to go to. My assistant at the time, Manuela, she said, Well, what do you want me to do? I said, Well, they can sign the document and then, you know, they can use the machine and I'll come back. Now, they didn't speak a word of English. And when I came back uh, from the lunch meeting, uh, my assistant, she's like, Aaron, you gotta see this kid. Now he's five, his dad's bring him in. She goes, He's running around, he's laughing, he's smiling. Oh my God, this is amazing. I go, Well, he's five, that's what they do. She says, no, you idiot. He's been on chemo for the last two weeks, hasn't been able to walk. I'm like, oh my God. I did not tell them anything. Their perceived value is nothing. They sat, no judgment, and recovered. Two weeks later, no leukemia. No joke. Changed wow. state. It's electrical voltage. Wow. Okay. So, dogs, children, I work with them all the time like that. We get taught and that becomes what I call the reality tunnel, which is taught to us wherever we grow up. That becomes our perceived value. If we're in China, perhaps we speak Mandarin, Cantonese, whatever, the culture, you know, peers, people, that becomes our influence. And that shuts us down from being open because now we're perceiving it through tunnel vision. And that is what a belief is called. So here's, here's an analogy quickly for it. You get your favorite new car. You're driving down, it's kind of acting out, bad gas, whatever. Um, you drive first service station and the guy or gal says, I, f I believe I can fix your car. You're like, okay, well, that's kind of, I don't, it doesn't resonate, right? Doesn't, I don't feel it. Drive a little bit further down, second opinion, and somebody says, I know you, I can fix your car. I, I know it. Where do you go? Second option, right? Knowing is absolute. Belief is not knowing. It's on a treadmill to that's nowhere. That's a good one. That's a good example. No joke. And that's what the penny drop. I've helped so many people. When they change that state, all healing is self-healing. But we're misguided through whatever agendas are. I'm not going to get into them. It doesn't matter. You can transmute it. Do people really want that help? 
My center is just a guide down the river. Where do you want to go, Captain? Where do you want to go? We'll help you get there. And we can do it in real time and educate you how to do it. But where do you want to go? And I had a lady that, you know, very ill. She had a very um, terminal disease, breast disease. Um, when she was cleared, she came and she goes, oh my God, I got my report back. It's all clear. And I'm like, that's amazing. How do you feel? She goes, she drops into it. She goes, I don't know. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You don't know? You've just been, you're told this is the end and now you're good and you don't know. She goes, well, this is the first time my husband has paid attention to me for many years. And I, she was a victim. She died of a broken heart. Oh, man. So th there's, there's an element here. And people don't understand that part. Yeah. So that goes to all healing. They call it placebo. It's not placebo. It's a self-knowing mechanism. No different than when you cut your thumb, it heals. Okay? And that's, yeah. But we were taught not to do that. Go to um, a very young institute, stethoscope, popsicle stick, you know, what, what's your symptoms here? And here, here, here's something, go home, think about it. White coat, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What's this device? Uh, there's so many things in here. That I know, I mean, this is like a, a I know. It's no, just, I like going meta. We could go meta and uh, we'll weave in and out of this. It's all beautiful. It's all, right. it's all lovely. Uh, but I would also be remiss just out of my own curiosity. What's the thing at the front door? There's it. It looks kind of like a metal detector, and then there's a big white box. And oh, so that was a prototype. Um, that is, uh, we we produce. Uh, I have groups of people I work with. Um, does a way to sanitize the room, not sterilize, because it's a different meaning to that. But sanitize the room. It's using water. And I put frequencies behind it and structure oh, wow. it. So when people come through the threshold, it's like... Yeah, and it stays in the atmosphere for 68 hours. So it works on all the different viral fragments and stuff. Wow. Yeah, wow. That's pretty cool. What's your, uh, what's your take on dealing with EMF? You know, this is something I've done. I mean... Oh, my God. We so many podcasts on all of the different, you know, yeah. testing and shielding and harmonizing and everything from the quantum stuff to the hard physics of blocking and Faraday and all, all the things. W where do you think we are with that and, and what can we do about it now that it's so prevalent? You know, being back here in LA, I'm just like, holy shit, in the two years I've been gone, it is just 5G to the hill. Well, that's milliwatt. That's a milliwatt I know, tech. dude, and they're everywhere. I mean, you have them in downtown Austin. They've done a bit of it, but I, I live in the sticks and we don't have it out there, thankfully. But So uh, before 2019, there was like 13,800 towers. Now there's like... In the country? In, in California. Oh, okay. And now there's like, uh, you know, 300 plus tower, thousand plus oh, towers. Man. So every square inch is covered by a milliwatt, which is the frequency of water, 2.45 gigahertz to the exponent of, you know, five. So what it does is two things. It ionizes, it speeds up cellular division, shortens telomeres, and we go through a process of age fast, okay? People walk around with cell phones on their head. I've, I've worked with somebody. You can see what it does. It creates a bad battery in our cell voltage. Now, I'm not saying bad stuff about technology. I love technology. All we have to do is filter it. Whether people are doing it good or bad intent, that's another subject matter. What I'm saying is it's no different than filtering your water today. You're not going to go down to Mexico and just like, ah, oh, drink the tap water. I know, well, we know people that probably had Montezuma's revenge, right? So yeah. it's like knowing stuff to fix it. Now, the second part of that is it bounces off of high density, uh, let's say concrete or bone. And it creates extreme low frequency, which blocks receptor site, so parathyroid, so now calcium receptor sites aren't working properly. So we have another voltage discrepancy and it causes dis-ease of cell. And that's part of that tech. Is, and is that the piece of the, the calcium, what's it called, the calcium voltage? Like the, it, let, yeah. it opens up the voltage of your cell and allows all this influx yeah. of calcium. Yeah, so it, it's like a bad battery. It's like the terminals are now calcified. 
So you're not getting um, on your battery. Calcium gated voltage channels. I think that's the yes. Word it, it, it blocks it, so it, it's like it corrodes. You gotta like you know uncorrode it. So now, what are, what are some of the things that you've discovered that are good for mitigating filtering and blocking and harmonizing all that stuff? Uh, cloth, Faraday cage, um, certain technologies, um, Soma Vedic to yeah, you know, um, doing ley lines to. I look at everything all around. I wonder if, because in here, there's all these Rife machines. And yeah, I negate this stuff, dude. Yeah. And then, but you guys have Wi-Fi in here. So I was in here and I was like, oh, I bet all the, the positive fields, the, the native EMF, the, the right frequencies that are of the Earth and of yeah. our cosmos versus the non-native EMF and these weird frequencies. It's balanced here. You're probably overriding it all, right? Well, no, I, I went to measures when I got the space. I did the ley lines here. I did uh, conditioning off the 60 hertz grid because remember, alternating current, great. However, dirty uh, energy, 60 hertz, on off switch. Potential disease, on off. Just being on a 60 hertz grid. So I balanced everything in this whole field. Um, then I have quantum stuff off site too. Cool. Working. So that's this energy. Cool. Yeah, balance Neat. everything, man. Tell me about the cloud room. Oh, yeah. Which I, I posted on my Instagram today. There's an Instagram post I did today that I took inside your cloud room, this pink cloud, and it was it was fun. So if people want to see a visual of it, follow me on Instagram, at Luke Story, and you'll see it. But uh, I walked in there, and I was like, whatever this is, I want to be in here. It just felt really good. So the only one in the world that does this. Uh, it completely redoxes cell voltage. Really? Yeah. In how long? I think I was in there 15 minutes or something. Is that a The longer, the better. Okay. So back in the 30s, um, children that were born with, you know, severe damage or whatever, DNA structure, um, they would nebulize minerals ionically. They'd breathe it, and it would help uh, repair the nucleotides' DNA. Amino acids, right? Okay. So this has a full spectrum. I drop out the sodium. Uh, sodium chloride, you know, IV uh, push or, or even any type of IV or Myers Are cocktail. Are you using like magnesium chloride instead yeah, of Yeah, but I, we, I modify it. Uh, okay. I have a group. So like the mist in the air. It it's a full spectrum without sodium. I drop oh, it. It's wow. got all minerals of life, everything in there. Wow. So it completely, wherever your body needs it, it recharges cellular voltage. It's like a battery pack. And that's going in your skin and your lungs. You breathe it, it's ionic. Totally wow. ionic. And what's the, is there a hydrogen element to it? Yeah, well, it's releasing, separating oxygen and hydrogen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. So, um, plus light. So, right, right. full spectrum of light, well, you eat, you know, plants for what? Vitamins. Vitamins are what? Photon, photosynthesis, vitamins. Yeah. So enzymes are photon. Right. Vitamins, photon. Huh. So it's photon activated, so light, with the structure that builds. So the amino acid makes, uh, or so the mineral makes amino acid, the protein, which is peptide, cell, organ, self. So that's the structure, the scaffold. Plus consciousness, a program frequency into it. Wow. For whoever's in there. How, how often do you go in there? I mean, I see you when, like... Whenever I can. That's, that's how when, I've, when I've been in here and it's fully... Op you know, we're after business hours now and everyone's gone. But I mean, you're in here really working with all kinds of different people. I mean, you have a great staff. By the way, your staff is really beautiful and helpful. So thank you. They're, they're why this place exists. Good job on the, on the HR because everyone has been just really, really lovely. But I see you just moving around. And when I was here the other day, you're like, hey, nice to meet you. And you're, you're off and doing your thing. Like, <laughs> I mean, do you get do you get just fully energized and fueled by the work you're doing here? Is it I do. You know, giving back and helping people, when they overcome challenges that they're told they've got to pack their bag and they're here, man, there's, it's, it's like there's nothing more satisfying to help somebody achieve their goal. Yeah. And deconstruct that whole story of, it's so not true. It's not true. We've done the last 
thing for over 100 plus years, we can split an atom. Split an atom. That's, that's incredible. I don't know, right? Cause a nuclear explosion, whatever. Can't figure out it's causing discord disease. Hmm, there's something wrong here. <laughs> it's, no, seriously. So yeah, in Western medicine, you, you go back to Rife. You're saying Rife. Yeah. So one of his biggest things, and people, this is amazing. Um, Rife, 1921, builds the world's most powerful microscope. 31,000 times resolution. That's pretty amazing. In 1980, we had a 5X machine. So 31,000 times for a first time could see a virus. Now here's the difference. His scope, he put glycerin and he was able to dampen and block the, electronic, uh, the electron bombardment into the sample in his egg or, or the dish. He was shielding it so he could see stuff without disturbing stuff. The electronic microscopy we use in Western Standard Care right now, they bombard so many electrons. It's like I put my agar or my sample, I turn on a high heat boil. It boils everything in pieces, fragments, and carcasses. They destroy the subject while trying to see it. Therefore, blood work comes back inconclusive. Oh, wow. And they're like, what's your name? Oh, um, we never say it. We're going to name a syndrome after you. Here's your label. Go home. Think about it. Oh, wow. Because they destroy it. Trippy. Yeah. So speaking of Rife, you guys have all these different... Well, uh, these are different ways to drive oh, it. Oh, okay. So for Rife was outlawed many years ago. Oh, okay. For people watching the video, when this is on... Um, uh, maybe there, let's turn it on. Is there, are there noble gases? Are there noble gases in here or something? There is. This has got neon. So okay. it's, it's an inert gas, noble gas. Uh, let's see here. And I, I have many different machines to drive um, different ways, frequencies. And I have to change it all the time. There we go. So that's creating a field. And this needs to be on your skin. It right? doesn't. It doesn't. Oh, really? Oh, okay. When you put it on your skin, it accelerates. And if I put you on a grounding pad, you're completing a circuit. But just coming into the view of it, I'm, I'm getting it, you're getting it. I'm going to grab the grounding pad. Yeah, you'll feel it. Actually, here. Uh, Luke, put it, um, put it on skin, and then okay. push it on your, uh, you're grounded with that thing. I wouldn't suggest that. You might short yourself out. Oh, well, actually, yeah, that's something to think about because. You're, you're all connected here. Don't this mic that. is actually hooked up to. Yeah, we're not going to okay. do that. You might, okay. you might feel yeah. a voltage that, uh, it's, it's okay. I can. Because. Oftentimes I'm running this on batteries, yeah. but I, when I travel, I plug it into the AC. So it's a good question that I, you know. Yeah, I'm glad you noticed that. But I can still do skin, even though I have electricity on my head. No, don't no. do it. Just hold it there. Okay. So, yeah, you're good. But we're getting it. Um, if I had my voltage meter, you would see it, it would respond to me here. Uh-huh. Same in proximity to you. Okay. So like a skin voltage meter? No, no, no. Just uh, electric voltage. Oh, okay, okay. Like, yeah. So very low amperage, um, it's sending a signal, program, I've, you know, so many different uh, frequencies, I write frequencies for different things. Yeah. So we take a body map when people come in here, and then we put them through our program, and then we create a program for them to continue. And what's this particular device called? This is the uh, True Rife uh, F22. Okay. Now, Rife, I mean, it's a generator. These are just systems that are using Rife's name, whatever. Sure. It's like Elon Musk, love his tech. You know, Tesla. No, it's not a Tesla. Right, right. Okay. I'm just saying. Right. So, so this, is, this is producing some degree of amperage, and you're running it on... Low amperage, low voltage, um, but it's driving so you radio waves and you that don't ionize, hurt you like a... Oh, it's radio waves. Yeah, man. Whoa. And then the frequencies are chosen in the software that run through here and go yeah, through... Yeah, and I write a lot of plasma them, too, too. Depending on our scanners and stuff oh, that wow. we're doing, biofeedback. And what was the biofeedback scanner that, that uh, I was on the other day? It was a nonlinear one. Where oh, I oh, wait, your feet? Yeah, I was, on, I was on the foot. Yeah, that was, um, that's an SI machine. So it's, um, it's more calibrated to... Western, um, very accurate, 
and three-point measurement system. There's over 500 sensors in the box. Most biofeedback have eight. Wow. So there's a little difference. Wow. Yeah, that was that was really a interesting. Trip, huh? Yeah, that was really interesting. One of the things that I really enjoy in my little home biohacking setup is uh, I don't have anything that sophisticated, unfortunately, but just you know an HRV thing or whatever, just different different things to assess the body. And yeah. I love you know th throwing someone in front of the biocharger, or the amp coil, or doing an ice bath or whatever sauna, anything. When I had a hyperbaric chamber, that was fun. Um, you don't need that, though. I got rid of it because it was messing with my ears, the tinnitus. It will make it worse. It's more oxidative stress every time. It made it hella worse, so I, I stopped. But anywho, uh, what I really dig is, is my own little mad scientist is running uh, an assessment on someone, however crude it might be, and then doing a few things and then coming back and seeing what happened. Yeah. There's like a sense of satisfaction in that, just seeing you move the needle on on the biology and the energetics. Yeah. Or ease of movement. How do you feel? Right. Well, let me, you know, I couldn't do this when I, you know, walked in here. <laughs> I've had so many people, and I'll just use this as an example. It's like, well, I'm not sure, because seeing is believing. That's how we've been taught yeah. the whole time. And I'm like, well, have you noticed anything? They're like, I'm not sure. Well, I did walk up a flight of stairs. I'm like, well, how many could you do before? And they're like, none. I said, uh, is that an improvement? I'm not sure. <laughs> is, that, is that good? I, may, I mean, they're like, yeah, you know what? Uh, it, I do feel better. Okay. <laughs> then something's going on here. But right. it's all about tuning. We can tune a guitar, a piano, a car. Why can't we tune ourselves? Right. I think that's the thing that turned yeah. me on about the frequency stuff in the beginning, like thinking about something like the amp coil, how it was explained to me. I did some podcasts. Is that with Aaron? Yeah. I know Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Years ago when they first came out, we did a bunch of podcasts and that concept of the Ella Fitzgerald high C ah, shattering, shattering yeah. the glass and the way it was explained is like these various pathogens and what have a, a signature resonant frequency and you can crack the cell wall of these pathogens with something like Lyme or whatever and um, render them inert or unable to replicate. And that just fundamentally, I, you know, I'm not a deeply scientific person and not necessarily super intelligent in that realm, but that's just like common sense. It makes sense, right? Yeah. Cymatics to yeah. how things are organized. So, yeah. that's, so going back to Ruth Drown, I'll wrap it up this way. Mm -hmm. um, I had to go to the library, found stuff, and this, this woman, she was a Tesla, brilliant. Uh, last name Drown, that's pretty much what happened to her, her career, unfortunately. And this is a tribute to them, by the way. Um, she was elected in 1915 to study with these guys. Now, I'll, ba I'll back it up a minute. In 1856, there was two allopathic doctors, Dr. George Starwhite, Dr. Abrams. They're like, well, we are looking at everything. Uh, electromagnetic spectrum, Newtonian law, physics. So if disease exists, it therefore must be a measured frequency based on this principle. So here's how they went to prove their hypotheses. They built a room the size of a phone built booth. They took a, a terminal ill patient. Now they're allopathic doctors, which means alternative medicine. It's weird as hell, 182 years. They took a terminal ill patient in through the back door sat them comfortably in a chair, bare feet, copper plate. A wire would go to an adjacent room, and they'd bring something that's considered healthy and neutral in through the front door, okay? And the healthy patient was, you know, instructed, pick up a paddle that was connected by copper wire to the sick patient. What do you suppose happened? They felt the same discomfort, same place as the sick patient, and for a moment, the sick patient had relief. Whoa. They put the guy put it down, or gal put it down, whatever pick it up again, whatever, heart going on, whatever. They repeat this process over 10,000 times what? with different patients in 1856, man. So, fast forward, Ruth, I liked it, stayed with these guys. Abrams took it over from George, I think he passed on, and it used up in his years. Ruth stays with these guys. She builds something, 1928. She builds the world's first radio vision device. So if you can imagine an MRI capability that can see inside the human terrain without ionizing it, you know, creating destruction, 10,000 magnetic gauss like an MRI today, using radio waves, that's what she did. She could see where discord was 
in real time in the body. Wow. She goes to present it to her people. She pulls the drape off. She goes, ta-da, look at this. They're like, what is it? Well, it's radio vision. She go, they're like, what does it do? Well, you can see where you know, bad voltage and disease is and whatever. And they're like, one guy looks at the other guy. He goes, oh, get rid of it. No, just, I don't care. Dump it in a river. I don't give a shit. Get rid of it. Thanks, Ruth. So nice to see you. That was Thomas Edison. No way, dude. Way. Wow. So then she starts working on another project. She comes up with this idea by God, download, whatever people want to call it. She comes up with this idea. She has a terminal ill patient that could not travel to her physical location. They're not going to get a horse and buggy at the time, right? She has him go down to local MD, draw a vial of blood, and send it by Pony Express. As long as she received it in 72 hours, she would put it under a frequency inert gas, just like you're holding there, and she would drive 880 hertz into the sample of blood. What do you suppose happened to the individual not in the same state or town? Got well. Quantum how? entanglement. Here's how, though. This is interesting. Jacqueline Rosalind, she discovered double helix. Uh, Crooks, no, Crooks, I always mess up his name. And Watson, they stole it from her. Double helix, two strand DNA. Now, everyone's a little bit different, but DNA is super coiled around a little histone protein. Otherwise, we'd be like three, 400 feet tall, so we're all compressed. All right, so if you unwind human DNA, it's 15.51 inches, approximately, 39.5 centimeters. It's a receiver transmitter for light and sound. It's an antenna. She was sending signal here in the blood. And two tuning forks were talking through space and time. Wow. I mean, they're looking for a crime scene investigation, hair or whatever, to match what. You have to have the coordinates right. So military industrial complex took this stuff. That's why you have a cell phone today. Holy shit. And no one knows who Dr. Ruth Drown was. Wow. If you Wikipedia her name, Loser, paraphrase, no joke. Oh, wow. I've collected this stuff for 30-something years, man. Wow. <laughs> so it, it was just like, what the oh fuck? It, what is yeah. going on here? Yeah. We, we use all this stuff, but people go, well, I don't see anything. Do you see your text message leave? Do you see the selfie when you take? Do you watch the picture? Go to the other person's phone? Yeah. Stop it. Is this, is this in the similar realm of like radionics? This is radionics. Oh, okay, okay. This is where it comes from. Oh, I see. So you take a picture, it's a capture of light. And light is DNA. Right. See, this is interesting because there's a couple of things that, that I work with. One are, uh, is this uh, Leela blocks. I okay. You've seen these, these gold blocks, and they're these quantum energy, not generators, but just contain quantum energies. And so you can harmonize the field in your house, et cetera. And there's another. We're change that word. I got to change it right now. Okay. Harmonize. Harmonize. That's what it means. Oh. It's a curse and a curse. Really? Harmonious, harmonious. Oh, It's shit. syntax, man. Really? Yeah. So what's the correct grammar. So what's the, what's the balance. word? Balance. Okay. okay. I'm just saying, you got, we got to change this because that, that keeps us stuck in yeah, that yeah. moment of time. And that's a trap. Well, I was interviewing a guy today who is a um, Amanita muscaria mushroom a forager and uses them for you know, as psychedelics and medicine and all this stuff and he was saying how the english language itself is a distortion and is a disempowering yes frequency and the word not even if even if you use positive words like doesn't like matter. harmonized it still sucks <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> oh it's like what they did with music right when they put it to 440 440 you know yeah yeah we're gonna change this whole yeah. thing I'd okay like. so back to the point so there's this, there's Leela blocks, and then they have this other service called um, Quantum Upgrade. Okay. And then there's another thing called FLFE or Focus Life I know Force those guys Energy. Too. Right. And so they'll, you know, they have these kind of generators, maybe similar to what you've done, transmitting something to this address as the unique identifier. And I totally get it. I feel it. I believe in it. I've interviewed all of them. I think they're authentic and integrous people and are doing really good things for the world. But it's very difficult for people to understand what you just described, the radionics and the kind of quantum entanglement. How's this thing over there when she puts my blood in the thing affecting my blood in my body right here? And so Easy. it's like you said, because we, we can't see it, we think it's not real, but I like the data, the wireless data example that you gave because no one doubts that. Here, 
I, I got to find a simple, uh, simple explanation. So when we prospect for oil and gas, what do we do? They're not digging holes everywhere. They measure the sound vibration. So this goes back to the equipment here. goes back to after you know, the Second World War. Former USSR, USA, Japan, they were competing in weapons of sound. USSR, they measured every frequency by octave of everything on this planet. Healthy cell, disease cell, grain of sand, rice, every, I'm not joking you. Octave of it, I've collected that stuff too. All right, so you have two tuning forks. They have to match. If they don't match, they won't sing. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Going to the height of an antenna. However, what does a chromosome look like? Huh. They're tuning forks. Whoa. Okay. It's simple. Damn. Sound vibration, man. In the beginning, there was a word. I don't know. Whatever <laughs> the hell it was. So, light. Yeah. Light travels really fast, 186,000 miles per second. So when, when we witness lightning storm, it's already gone up and we're seeing the fall of the photon, whatever. So it's passing through um, an area. And it's creating a sub-vibration called a phonon. Photon, phonon. 90 degree angle. And then there's scalar between. I'm not going to get into that right now. Yeah. So that's why you go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, at 720 mile, whatever, an hour. You have sound. Plain sound. That's how it works, everything. Sound vibration, Ella Fitzgerald. C vibration, you pulse it, what happens? Shatter. Troops walking in unison across the bridge. They'd have to break up that, you know, whatever goose, that, whatever they were doing, whatever, that pounding, you know, march. Because if it matched the vibration of the bridge, it would collapse. No way. Way. Holy shit, because of the resonant frequency? Yeah, so uh, engineers wow. know this. You know, you have uh, skyscrapers, like, like in you know, Dubai, you know, uh, it's the entire, like high structures, whatever, wind loading. They have to have dampers in it to accommodate for the acoustic vibration. Otherwise, they'll shatter. Wow. Okay, so this everything is so else fun. works I love way. you, bro. You're, you're amazing. I, I just wanted to find Incredible. simple, simple stuff. But love yeah. you too, man. You're here. What uh, What do you use the tuning forks you have in your hand for? Oh, so this is so Fijo nine scale. I have a lot of different tuning forks. I you know I experiment with a lot of stuff. But I just wanted experiments with people. They could feel it or see it, and it goes back to you know when they prospect for oil and gas. What do they do? They don't take holes everywhere. What do they use? Ultrasound, uh, you know, uh, sonar. Sonar, yeah. G cord, 1,200 feet below. Ah, natural gas. They measured all that stuff. Wow. Tesla did this. <laughs> oh, my God. He's like, noon tomorrow, I'm going to make an earthquake just to show you how vibration works. He takes this pole. It's like 30 feet, whatever the, the, the height is. And he packs, you know, fine granule sand around this pole, metal pole, all the way down. And then larger stone all the way to bigger crushed, three-quarter rock, whatever. He goes, okay. He hits it. One, 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 one. P wave, S wave created earthquake. Whoa. Okay. Like harp. Harp, yeah. Well, that's uh, <laughs> death rate stuff. And that comes from his stuff. But harp is now 5G. Uh, okay. They don't need those towers. That's uh, cloud seeding engineering stuff. Yeah. I'm not even going to get into that. I've been around all that stuff. I get man. it. Yeah, yeah. It's just when we have an anomalous earthquake, like Haiti was the first one I was like, harp. I mean, I don't know. Just my gut was like, no way was, Katrina, that, was that real. It's all part of that. Yeah. My buddy died, you know, 2011. He went on Jesse Ventura's show. His name is Dr. Fred Bell. Um, a buddy of mine. He was talking about some of the stuff that's happening right now and um, whether, you know, whatever. Um, he didn't wake up the next day on that show. Oh, whoa. So I sat, he gave me that crystal over there. Oh, the big, wow. The, yeah. I was looking at that today. Yeah, that's from him. Yeah, so. I mean, that's, I, I hope my audience, I mean, there's thousands of people that are going to hear this, but I hope it's small enough where I can talk freely and then not get offed, you know? No, you're okay. <laughs> you're okay. We're not. We're not. I mean, I don't. Go, I don't get too out there, but 
you know, I'm not the only one. I mean, I see on TikTok, my wife will send me stuff and there's like 20 year olds that know what harp is and shit. I'm like, what? How does used to be this information was like so cloaked and and fringe, but I think people are starting to become aware that there's, they're they're looking at like, okay, well, how, what, how is this even possible? Yeah. So open mind, curiosity. I mean, that's what I just wanted to help people heal from terminal stuff. So I mean, rabbit hole, man. That's what it know. takes. You were yeah. talking about the uh, like the kind of multi-wave oscillator thing you built, and you mentioned base twelve mathematics, and uh, it's, I did. It's tuned to thoracic twelve. Okay. It's fine. Because and then that reminded me of of interviewing um, Jerry, the creator of the Rasha. Oh and right, I know Jerry very well. Yeah, yeah, and he we did a show in Mexico uh, about it, and um, and he was explaining all that to me, and it was a little over my head. Right. But, and I've had some really deep experiences in the present. I have Russia here. I know, I know, I heard. I I haven't done it here, but I've I've done it many, many times and uh, have had a a couple really trippy experiences, you know, just consciousness expanding. Yeah. Not quite psychedelic, but definitely like, oh, something is happening, you know, that's that's undeniable. And and there's one actually in in Austin uh, that some guys there got some friends of mine and Anytime I've laid in the presence of that and put the headphones on, I mean, I either go into a super deep theta, like dream yeah, state, yeah. or in some cases, almost a little time travel shit, going back to my past in different places. It's kind of a journey, really. It's a you journey. Know? Yeah. So what, what's been your experience of um, working with the Rasha? And so much, man. Yeah? Yeah. That's only part of what I do, though. Sure, sure. I mean, great. And I have... W- so many other incredible things that take it to another level of great yeah yeah so that's that's like awesome but then everything else i do is like uh, beyond that right and when when i came in the other day you were really gracious and thank you again for the opportunity i came to meet doyle and l here and uh and i came in and they were doing something in that room yeah some bells and whistles i don't know what they're doing they're like give us a few minutes we're in a thing you know and then you your staff ran me through like this whole circuit this device included and you know the um assessment situation in there and see and uh i'm I'm learning the language and uh i was like wow this is is so cool that you can come through and just kind of do a circuit almost like in a gym right you have a membership and is i'm assuming that the the circuit or the different modalities it's different for everyone here. yeah right some people are um when they first come in depending on um their state energy uh, what's going on, we may just do a little. You got to peel the layers back mm-hmm. on the onion. We got to, you know, I'm big on lymph and helping get those uh, things out of the system. So, and then, of course, hydration and electrolytes. Yeah. So yeah. So, so it's up. the way you do things here is on a membership model, right? Yeah. So um, I had to do it that way. It's a PMA. Oh, cool, her. cool, nice. So it's like we're we're just playing golf here. I don't know yeah. what's going on. <laughs> yeah. We're just playing with frequencies. Yeah, it's just like no we're, we're just sitting and praying in front of the light bulb. It's yeah. Good. Uh what about the um what about the cell sonic? So interesting thing. Um comes from shockwave. It really helps regenerate cell voltage. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Okay. So you can take a, a really unhealthy cell voltage and you can flip polarity and make it a healthy cell voltage and you've been having success with a number of different challenges everything but on that everything else but we we did that on my neck in an effort to try and um, alleviate some of the tinnitus stuff you said you've been having some success with that yeah and are you are you finding is it just me or do more people right now seem to be having tinnitus than ever before like i never heard of it until i kind of started getting it and now I don't know if it's like if you're driving a VW Bug, then that's all you see kind of thing. Or is it becoming more prevalent? It's more prevalent. It has to do with um, engineering of stuff. Okay. I'll leave it. I don't want to get people to from and, you know, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's environmental. (laughs) It's environmental um, loading. I don't know if that's like correct. Um, I feel the... Hellfire missile coming right now. That just, yeah. I'm just joking. And but you've been you've been having some success with the cell sonic. Lots. With that. Not just with that. I mean uh-huh. everything we do here. So 
Tinnitus could be misalignment of the atlas. It could be uh, zygomatic process, the vent from sinusitis, from bacterial stuff. Yeah. Uh, fungal infection, uh, blunt force trauma, um, emotional discord. There's different things that cause the same symptomatic sure. issue. Sure. And so that's how we navigate. They're all, so this is like a toolbox for me. Yeah. I have many different tools that drive things. Now, um, it's kind of like an MMA fighter versus a boxer. Well, disease or parasites or bacteria have consciousness. Virus isn't alive, it's just a code that slips in. However, virus is within bacteria, bacteria lives within parasites, so it's very interesting. It's a little like Russian dolls that get smaller. I'll get into other stuff personally after. Um, but consciousness is very interesting. People have, uh, we hear a lot about candida, candida, candida. Well, you don't want to kill all candida off, 15 to 20% ratio, because it's good flora food, you know, for other organisms. And um, we share the consciousness with it, though. So, for instance, you're like, oh my God, I feel like chocolate cake. Uh, the candida yeah, feels like chocolate. It's like they're making a phone call up to the guy. You know, I made this little commercial in my head and show this with people. You see this guy, you zoom in through the lens of the eye, binoculars looking and radioing to the guy in the ear. It's like, no, keep going, keep going. Have him open the door right now. Fridge opens, you know. Yeah, no, no, chocolate cake right there. <laughs> chocolate cake guy whispers chocolate cake and then says to the stomach, hey, incoming, we have chocolate cake. So consciousness. Now, Things that have consciousness, if you keep doing a linear approach, it will see your timing and move out of the punch. Oh, wow. That's why I have a lot of different tools. Right. right? So it, there's an adaptability. Of Absolutely. It. Yeah, it's consciousness. It's like ionic fluoride, rat poisoning. Yeah. Um, they change the formula every couple of years or every year. Why? One, one rat eats the poison, dies horrifically, goes into the field. All of a sudden, Australia, rats don't touch that stuff. Consciousness, man. Oh, wow, wow. Collective. That's really interesting. That's like that thing where on, you know, if you have a parasitic infection on a full moon, you'll get all agitated and crazy. Because it's actually growing new. It's like harvest moon. It's growing Whoa. new That's larva. what it is? Yeah. Oh, my God. So one of the biggest causes of asthma that I've, like, looked at for years Ascaris lumbricoide larva in the lung. So it goes down the, uh, you know, the brachial down into the aveola and the little larva gets stuck there and restricts airway. That's crazy, dude. You get rid of it, though. You were mentioning with the, um, the different uh, foundations of tinnitus and, you know, of course, like having it really bad and trying a bunch of shit to fix it on the physical plane and ha I've only made it worse, everything I do, unfortunately. Don't put a balloon in your ear. But one thing I one thing I discovered was uh, I tested uh, did a nasal test for a Marcon's infection. Okay. Like an anti antibiotic resistant bacteria. Yeah, yeah. And I had it, and so I did, you know, a couple months of nebulizer and glutathione sprays and all this I stuff. Won't do it. And then I tested again, and I still had it, and I was like, what? How did I not clear it? Because I was so diligent, you know. Because you have to know the coordinates of the island to hit it. Ah, uh, okay. It's a different thing. Because it's hidden in all these little cavities and. Biofilms and shit. Biofilm to even uh, Jonas Salk when he's looking for you know remedy for polio, he discovered CMV, cytomegalovirus, and that's the origin of uh, herpes, chickenpox, bronchiolosis, um, you know shingles, all that stuff. And over time, what was it? 1953. They gave people they were testing it, so you get rid of polio. Great. Whatever the agenda was, they were just seeing what, what it would do. And it embeds itself in the ganglia in the nervous system. So any type of stress, low voltage, thing pops out, cold sore, whatever. Over time, is it a number one common denominator for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, MS, Parkinson's, um, the frontal lobe dementia, uh, dementia, etc. Neurological stuff, but you can get rid of that too. Wow. 315,000 nucleotide. Anyway, it th doesn't matter. <laughs> so so you, you think with something like Marcon's, if you know the, the right frequencies and the right energetics of it, that you could... Yes, 100%. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. And, and virus, sometimes you got to follow it all the way down to absolute zero. 
So you can shatter something, and then there's fragments. So for instance, when people come in, let's say they have, they go and get blood work done or whatever. When you take a hole and you shatter it, is it more? Tests don't show that. Oh, it wow. shows numbers always go up because it's in a gazillion pieces. Oh, interesting. So people get scared and go, oh, it's making it work. No, it's broken down. Now it's going to go through the lymph drainage system. However, that being said, you have to, for virus, you hit it, it breaks apart. If you don't fall down to absolute zero, it can sometimes reconstitute itself. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What's up with this uh, vibe plate you have out outside there? Oh, so that is vibrational. I mean, it's been around for a long time. Is that like the Turbosonic? Yeah. Is it a speaker or is it no, a motor? No, no, no. This, this, this is a motor. Oh, this, okay. this is vibrational. Okay. So it's on a fulcrum. You know, you s uh, the closer you are to center point, there's less uh, resistance. Uh, the further your feet are apart, um, anything over 28 hertz will stimulate pituitary HGH. So it's um, it's really good for bone density. NASA uses it. Never yeah. any straight answer. Because I've been I've been using uh, various vibe plates. The one I have now, the company is called Vibe Plate, and it's a big rack, which is really cool because you can hang on it and stretch on it and stuff. Oh, yeah, so those are good. But it, I have an AI gym here, man. <laughs> yeah. No joke. Oh it's really? PSX one. You should see this thing. The axis is oh my god, it spots you everything. It knows millisecond per is failure. Is it the ARX or no, something? No, no, no. Oh, I'll show okay. I'll show you this thing. It's like. But the, the vibe plate I have, like, I mean, I like it. I use it every day. I have my red light panel there, and I do my whole thing. But it doesn't tell you what frequency it is. It just has a variable, you know, a dial. And you, go, you can go bop, 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 or ring, you know. But I'm curious. I may have to reach out to them and be like, what do the numbers on, we measure on the controller? I mean, yeah, reach out. They might yeah. say it. Because the one not. you have is a specific it frequency. It goes up to 35 hertz. Oh, okay. Which is, um, you know, within the... Um, beta uh conscious you know frequency uh-huh so i've got all did you ever there. mess with the turbosonic that it has a speaker in it it's like a vibe i, thing I, like I know it very well oh okay. yeah it's cool yeah those are interesting they were like way out of my price range back in the day when i discovered it but i love the feeling i would get on that thing and i'd run it all the way through the d it had some automated programs you know right. from lower to higher frequencies and man i'd get on that thing and just feel amazing afterward yeah they're great little tools. 10 minutes on that, twice a week. That's all you need. Wow. And bone density, everything that you want to do to stay fit. Yeah. Super cool, super cool. And then um, this other thing I saw over here, I'm just trying to cover everything. It's a lot. I know. You could spend hours. And there's probably man. a bunch of stuff here that oh I, my God, I didn't I've even notice. Oh, my God. stuff, everything. I, um, yeah. What about the, uh, the resonant light? machine what what's that one do I it's a canadian um just the uh dr james Barr. they did a lot of testing on it um preset programs or you can put programs into it different application different driver um again another way to uh be in a space that you get um the benefit of being tuned up got it okay cool uh, what you else? can't cure anything. Remember this. Of course. As, as like forbidden. That's yeah. trademark, man. 1953. Yeah. It's like you can't do that. Yeah. However, you can't get well. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. What What do you have? Uh, what do you hold in the future? Like, what do you think's next? Is, are, are you aware of any technologies or modalities that are kind of in the works that are going to really so change many, the game? Some I can't really even talk about. I'm okay. I work with a lot of different groups, and yeah, you know. So, but I can say that uh, you know, regenerative uh, program is it's been here for a long time, and you can do. I mean, the star is the limit. You know, like yeah, we can do anything. Do you foresee uh, yourself ever doing any kind of a franchise or, or multiple locations? Or are you very happy just being here in Malibu? No, no, I've, I'm working with groups right now. They want to take this global. Right oh, now. really? Right now. I have a suggestion for you. Sure. Uh, Austin, Texas, number two. Okay. All right. Well, we can, we will certainly put that on the map. It'll fly there, man. Yeah. There's a lot of people. I, I want the best people that can do this better than I can. Right. This is just, I'm sending a free ghost to the machine. This, again, is a tribute to people that, I mean, the women and men that built this technology so long ago have been forgotten. It's a tribute to them. So well, just that's to do One thing things. I've noticed um, speaking with you today is you've named a, a number of different noteworthy women. Yeah. And I find 
in the alternative and in the in the medical field and just in all of like the scientism field that women have been um and also just on the on the client or patient side like yeah. all of the clinical trials are always on the male body probably not necessarily because of the patriarchy just male bodies are simple more simple, simple right yeah. easy to test and quantify but um it's interesting that you've named a few you know radical inventors like this drown woman yeah. and, and others um, that's kind of new to me. I'm used to just like, oh, it's just a bunch of dudes doing this stuff. And, and maybe males just have more of a proclivity for tinkering around with gadgets than, yeah, than women absolutely. do. So I don't, I don't think it's necessarily all sexism or something, but it's cool to hear that some women like really moved they, the they needle moved and, some stuff and did and, some cool stuff. But yeah. it's, it's the um, positive, negative, neutral. Right. And that's how everything works. And that goes back to the Tesla thing. And that, and that also the positive and negative and neutral also is the, the scale of like feminine energy and masculine energy, Absolutely. right? And then somewhere in the middle, you have the embryotic yeah. kind of potential of the neutral. How, not to be, you know, to offend anybody, Christ consciousness, Buddha, uh, you know, God, energy, male power versus Holy Spirit, feminine, negative power. It goes to the Holy Trinity, Star of David. Wow. Blood. Under You're a microscope is a pyramid tetrahedron. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, bro. gold tetrahedron. What? Yeah, so there's some weird stuff. Now. There's an interesting component in this conversation, too, when you were talking about the sun and the red light and the masculine energy. How does the moon and the feminine energy, right? Because the male body is regulated to the cycle of the sun and the female body is regulated to the cycle of the moon. Where does, where does the moon play into this world? Magnetism. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So, so we, we have, have flow, energy, 90 degree angle. Wow. Field of energy. Wow. It's kind of cool. Man, this... This I can hear it. You're yeah. like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm hearing it. It's like, you're hearing it in the You're mind. lit up. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to turn it off. Like, it's kind of cool, right? I like but it. But I, I was like, I'm getting this through the sound. I of thought that. it was the tinnitus for a minute. I was like, oh, no, that's a new tone. I'm like, no, it was this coming through the mic. So if you guys just heard it, wee, 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 wee. That, yeah. was, that was this. Super was that, incredible. That's the lollipop, man. Well, dude, that's what my uh, wife called. I sent her she, a photo. Okay, and okay. she's like, oh, that's cool. You're playing with the neat lollipop. Yeah, so many people have called that the lollipop. So I'm like, it's sticking. How many people have dropped this thing? Oh my God, I, yeah, well. Which I'm really trying hard not to do right now. Yeah, go. it's like in concrete floors, so it's like, okay. Yeah, when, yeah. I, when I was holding it the first time, I was like, you know a few people have like, oh yeah, they've, they've done it, so it's just like I charge them extra. Um, one, one question for you here, for people watching the video on that, on that center camera right. there, they've right. definitely been going, what in the world is that thing? What is this thing sitting between us? So. Tesla coil, inert gases um, in a very interesting configuration. And going back to, if you look at the two pyramids over it, Star of David, with a holographic projector. So it creates a toroidal field uh -huh. and it just balances energy. It's like a tunic fork right. the body. And does it need to be plugged in like the bio? Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I plug it in. Got um, it. And then do, do you have a way to, uh, to alter the frequencies? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I, rebuild all this stuff this wow like everything so are you fight. personally like also techie and good yeah. at engineering and shit like uh, that too big time oh okay Built everything here ah okay yeah okay so you you have I'm, I'm like the janitor so i just kind of like get people to do stuff so and, cool man so well i've loved talking to you you're doing such great work here and, and i love sharing people like you and the work you're doing with the world because it gives other people the inspiration to continue to carry the knowledge on, right? I yeah. mean, I've got, I get so many messages from people, hey, I wanna start some kind of a healing center. Like, what's the coolest stuff? I did a two-part solo cast a few months ago where I just named every cool thing that I've ever found for people that want to explore a different kind of model like you've created here, right. you know? Um, and you know, some people are going to go like the f float tank and ice bath and yeah, sauna cool. route, and some people are going to go into the rife and the you know frequencies and whatever. But I think it's really fun to share this because there's going to be people listening that have no idea that any of this shit even exists, yeah. and they're caught in the the medical system and they can't get out and they don't know there's another way to it's to all come about, into balance. It's it's all about balance. It's all about best practices. Like if somebody needs an Advil at night to get a good night's rest, I'm not saying don't do that. Somebody has an appendix that is ruptured, they need surgery. You know, a car accident, um, 
you have to put that arm back on. What I'm saying is, is bringing everything together and having you know a full system, a 360 right. degree approach. Complementary. Yeah, and rather it than works contradictory. With, yeah, and it's like, yeah. why are we fighting? Why are we divide art of war? You know, <laughs> yeah. why are we doing this? Yeah. It's like there's so many different ways. This should be first aid. And then if we need, you know, to go further with other tech surgeries and whatever, but this should be first aid and rebalance body. And sometimes people need additional support and I'm, I'm okay with it, but tell do me, no harm, right? Tell me about how you um, healed your Achilles heel. Man, I just changed the voltage. <laughs> Isn't that something that is not readily self-healing for people? It's supposedly, oh. supposedly. I, so I was looking at it from a perspective of, okay, injury occurred, separation, recoil, gastric nemus, the foot, you know, hanging off. Like, and my wife goes, I think you need surgery on this. I'm like, uh, I got this. So a week later, I'm able to put pressure on it. Two months later, it was fully recovered. I didn't have any surgery, no Wow. No cadaver part. What were you, did you, were you working with PEMF or what? what uh, kind, kind of, of a mix of stuff I, I did okay. here. Um, I just knew I could change the cellular voltage. Wow. And so Rillo effect, like, uh, you know, red blood cells. When, so imagine a, a balloon. It's full of helium. It's floating. Everything's working. It's called vasomotion. You were talking about hyper, you know, baric chamber. Well, that's a mechanical pressure force. They take you 33 feet, 40 feet with glioblastoma, astrocytoma, below. So it's, you're being squished. It's uncomfortable, claustrophobia, whatever. The minute you come back to atmospheric pressure, the oxygen therapy is over. However, if PMF, you're using a magnetic field, well, if the helium gets out of the balloon, it collapses the magnetic field, and now we have a pancake effect. It's called Rillo effect. So we have very sticky blood. The viscosity is moving slow. And you have poor circulation, which is like traffic on the 405. However, if you repair the magnetic field, it knows how to three-dimensionally look. It separates space and it flows. Right. So that's what okay. you're, you're looking at when you look at like the live blood cell analysis of Same thing. before and after on a mm -hmm. PMF mat. And you see like, holy shit, all the platelets are moving around and not exactly. stuck together. Exactly. So I knew I could do that with, well, cells knew how they were designed. Let me give the information to give that, um, you know, remind it to look that way. And that's how I did it. Cool. So, so good. Yeah, that's how I did Love it. it. That's how I think. Man, a, lo a lot more fun than surgery, too. Uh, who have been, you've named a, a bunch of people, so this might be difficult. Um, but if you could pick three teachers or teachings that have really impacted your life, you know, in a global sense, you know, like philosophy of your life, who have been three, three teachers or, or philosophies or teachings themselves that have really made you who you are? Um, I think... I may share that with my mom and dad. They're really hardworking individuals that, you know, always supported everything. Nice. So it's, it was really, to come from that, amazing. Wow, you're um, lucky. I don't meet many people that had that experience. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, you know, and it's, um, I wish more people had that because it was, um, yeah, we went, we went through a lot. I mean, we had nothing to having and not having, and it's been a journey, but... Um, I was always fascinated with Tesla and just energy. And, um, but again, at five, I was hit with lightning. So that's kind of when I walked in. Oh, really? So my, we moved into a new subdivision, Pickering, uh, not Pickering. This is up in uh, Calgary. And they were just, they just augured for the uh, divide property line for a fence. And this cloud came in in Calgary. It's like, give it 10 minutes, it can change weather. It could be from hot to cold to snow to rain to whatever. It's like the, the Chinook and the, it's just north of uh, Montana, whitefish, but uh, five hours or whatever. Uh, big, big sky, Alberta. So anyway, I'm five years old and we moved into this place and we had this dog and the dog was a white Samoyed Russian Husky, but we had to walk it because there's no fence. So we walk outside. My mom has shoes on. I have no shoes on. 
and we're walking down just you know the side yard whatever all of a sudden I lit up she fell over my mom she was grounded she had shoes on I took a full charge whoa dog ran down the street dog's name was K-I-M-O chemo <laughs> God. can't make this up weird, we're man. living in a simulation it's for sure it's so weird man so that's so interesting. You so, had the ultimate frequency experience. Yeah, really. I, I took a charge. It changed. And going back to uh, Clayton and Jeff for uh, you know, measure my yeah, they three my my nervous system is three times larger than most people. So I I have a different wiring mechanism. Wow. So, so they calibrated. They you? calibrated me. Interesting. Yeah, you can ask them. It's what like, a trip! Like, this is so bizarre. That's wild. Yeah. Holy so, shit. Anyway. Well, I knew there was a reason I needed to sit down and talk to you. Here we are. I mean, Doyle encouraged it, so I'll give him the credit. But yeah, uh, also, I, I just knew you were up to some magic in here. So thank you so much for making the time. You worked your ass off all day, and you're sitting here contributing some great value to me and our listeners. So I really appreciate you. Well, thank you. And hopefully this, um, I just want this out there. And whoever wants to do this, it's out there for you to you know, achieve it and get your family back into balance, you know, and you can do it. Right on. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you.